Happy Hour. Damn, son, where'd you find this? He never holds back, and he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Happy Hour. This, this, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Listen to me, Randall. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. That's all I'll ever be. Whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. What time is it? No! Happy Hot Topic! I don't know if I heard you. What time is it? No! Happy Hot Topic! What the hell is going on with Alec Baldwin at Scumbag Leech? To an update on the fatal Rust movie set shooting involving actor Alec Baldwin, the family of Helena Hutchins, the set of photographer who was shot and killed on set, yeah. have filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Alec Baldwin and the film's producers. I think the family was waiting for Alec Baldwin to either send some money or reach out or do anything. But when Alec Baldwin showed that he had no remorse, then he's being interviewed by that liberal hack known as George Stephanopoulos. And George is pretty much letting Alec just do whatever in the interview. It wasn't like George asked any hard-hitting questions. But then again, that asswipe, whenever he interviews somebody that's liberal, he always defends them and goes easy on them. So when Alec Baldwin was being interviewed by George, Alec was like, I did nothing wrong. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't shoot the gun, even though everyone said he shot the gun. So that was what really pissed me off. Like, I've never liked Alec Baldwin. I've despised him my whole life. He reminds me of people that made fun of me growing up. I don't think he's that good of an actor. He ruined 30 Rock. I just don't like the guy. But I went, hey, maybe he has some emotion. I went, hey, maybe he feels a little bad. No, not at all. Once an asshole, always an asshole. KTLA 5's Kimberly Chang live in downtown Los Angeles where they just held a news conference. Kimberly? And you're walking around a bunch of homeless people. Oh, yeah, during the Super Bowl, let's clean up the homeless people to impress people worldwide, even though all the people that went to the Super Bowl could probably pay to help out the homeless. Hi, Glenn. Attorneys are wrapping up that news conference right now. Today, they did announce a wrongful death lawsuit on behalf of her family, her husband, and her nine-year-old son. Now, the suit names... Yeah, think about that. Your nine-year-old son forever doesn't have a mother because Alec Bowen... That asswipe was always going against people that believed in guns, and then the gun is what ends up... I guess any other person you would say the gun does them in, but when you're a famous actor, you can get away with anything. It's infuriating. He's the same thing as us. He's a human being who shit, who's going to be laying in the ground someday dead. I don't care how famous you are. I don't care how much money you have. It's called human decency. Any other person would have been charged. Anybody else? Oh, but I was in 30 Rock. That means I'm better than everybody. Ah, fuck you. Actor Alec Baldwin, as you mentioned, Russ Movie Productions, El Dorado Pictures, and several other entities. Attorneys say they were responsible for safety on the set and their cost cut. Yeah, I don't even know why they gave Alec a gun. He's an actor. And recklessness led to the death of Hutchins. The cinematographer was fatally shot on the Russ movie set yeah. in Santa Fe, New Mexico. In October, Baldwin was holding the gun. Attorney Brian Panish. But I didn't shoot it, even though I was holding it, and she died. But it was the air. It was the universe that shot it, not me. Says they have independently interviewed witnesses and hired experts. And based on their own investigation, yeah. they recreated the events that they believe happened and did it show alec not shooting the gun and just somehow some way the bullet came out like it was uh, no way no way that he shot that gun right get the hell out of here attorneys say the crew had complained that safety was an issue and despite some i and i hate hearing that 
That's always infuriating. You always, it's the same thing whenever there's a school shooting. Oh, that kid was always weird in class and threatening people and saying he's going to shoot up the school, but we didn't turn him in. It's the same thing with this. Uh, there was all these props that were falling that were almost crushing people to death and then Alec Baldwin shot somebody. But yeah, besides all the issues that we hit on set, we just ignored it the whole time for an important cinema classic known as rust everybody was gonna go in line and see rust some workers quitting in protest the production continued the lawsuit states that industry standards were not met and that baldwin should have had safety training on handling that gun and then there was somebody on set i think she was the one that took care of the guns and her father was like the michael jordan of like taking care of guns on set like he's like the goat and she got the job because of him. And she was on a podcast saying, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing on set, but I got it because of my father. <laughs> and it's like, shut up. And then the person ends up losing his life. And it's like, you got this dumb millennial Gen Z douchebag not knowing how to use guns. And you have Alec Baldwin not knowing how to use guns. It's almost like there shouldn't have been guns on set. And to see compensation just and fair yeah. for Matt Hutchins and his son Andros, who he lost, his long-term wife, who was the love of his life, and his son has lost a mother. Yes. Track of it is a young but poor Alec. <laughs> the poor dude. That's what's infuriating about Alec even crying. Like, just say I'm going to pay it off and make everything go away. At least be genuine with us. The problem is Alec Baldwin is not a genuine guy. The problem is Alec Baldwin's someone you don't want to be around. Young boy who will never have a mother. And it's a man who lost his wife who he had a long-term great marriage with. So, Oh, but is Alec Baldwin okay? We need to have them be fully compensated. Yes. And we need to hold the people responsible. To the fullest. This is one of multiple lawsuits, a separate complaint filed on behalf of the armor who oversaw firearms on the set and two other colleagues accused the ammunition supplier of creating dangerous conditions on the movie set. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. This lawsuit, this settlement, whatever the hell they're going to go through. Here's how it's going to go. They're going to write a nice fat check. Because you're not going to be able to bring the person back. You're going to write a nice fat check. And then move on with their day. And now because of Alec Baldwin, I know we don't like thinking about death, but imagine you're going to die someday and Alec Baldwin took your mom's life. That woman was friends with a lot of people. So all these friends lost a friend, a husband lost a wife, the mother and father lost the kid. Like someone's life was taken because of Alec Baldwin. But because that sociopathic piece of garbage made it about him, he hypnotized us. Here's the thing though. Here's the thing. One time, there was a sports radio host who one time told me, and I think he was projecting about himself, but he told me that like this radio guy was uh, talking about how he was talking crap about his co-host, and he went on Twitter <clears throat> and defended himself, and then he told me when talking about that incident, he was like, yeah, bro, like if you're able to look yourself in the mirror, that's all that matters. And I told the guy that that was talking bad about my co-host. If you can look yourself in the mirror, that's all that matters. And even though the person that told me that was probably projecting, the same thing can happen that that's the truth. If you are able to look yourself in the mirror, you're fine. But... All the people on set that messed up. The dumb Gen Z millennial who didn't know how to use the gun. Alec Baldwin. They can't look themselves in the mirror. They know they messed up. You can get all the money paid to them, but they're never getting their mom back. Like I said, here's the thing. Even if they are able to look themselves in the mirror, do you really want to be them? My girlfriend's mom once gave me the Best advice ever. I was talking about all the radio people that talk crap about me, that run their mouth about me without knowing who the hell I am or saying it to my face. Shut up! In different cities, running their mouth. Shut up! Worry about your own failing marriage. Uh, here's the thing, though. The thing is this. I was bitching about it to my girlfriend's mom, and she has a very good job, so she knows things about life. And she looked at me, and she goes, imagine being in their world. Imagine having their brain. 
And then you look at people that you don't like and you go, oh, thank God I'm not them. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by the best trainer in all of the Bay Area, Devin Prasad. FitSageFitness.com. Fit underscore Sage underscore Fitness on Instagram. Let me tell you, man. Because I don't want to sit here and not give my good friend, Devin Prasad, enough credit. I don't want to sit here and give you guys an understatement. When I tell you that Devin Prasad is the best trainer on this planet, there might be a good trainer at your local chain gym that just wants money from you. But if you legitimately want a trainer that will be there for you, that will give you advice, that will take care of you, Devin Prasad is the way to go. If you live in Tampa Bay, you can work out with him in person by signing up at fitsagefitness.com. But if you don't live in Tampa Bay, don't worry. Don't have a panic attack, even though you're missing out. You can do virtual workouts with him at Tampa or at fitsagefitness.com. And here's the thing. When you go there and you sign up for the appointment, just tell him that I sent you. Because he was going to hook you up anyway with a great deal. Oh, he was going to give you the best deal of all time. But if you go there and you name drop me, you'll get hooked up, man. Or a woman, whatever the hell you identify as. Happy hour. Happy hour. Finally, I'm one of those guys who can't wait to get to work in the morning. Like a dairy cow. Ah! Yes! Oh. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Happy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Oh, yeah. You hear those wedding bells? No, I'm not getting married yet. Don't worry. Don't have a panic attack, even though I don't think you would have cared either way. When I saw this headline here, (laughs) I was outraged for the person. I was embarrassed for the person. When I saw this next headline here, I went, what the hell are you doing, bro? I mean, seriously? Los Angeles Rams star Taylor Rapp pops the question just moments after winning Super Bowl 56. Yeah. But the Rams... You just won the Super Bowl. You can get any girl you want. You obviously cheat on your wife because everybody in the NFL cheats. Oh, but I'm going to get down on the knee and propose to you. Come on now. I'm not saying not to get married, but you literally are going to cheat. You're going to cheat because you're in the NFL. You just cheat. So why get married? Rams were built to win the Super Bowl. All the Los Angeles Rams in the last five years that paid for the game and just went there to take selfies and don't really know anything about the team. Yeah, you cheer for your team. Even though when the 49ers are there, it's like they're playing in San Francisco. Oh, but your fan base. You're such a good sports city. The way you don't give a shit about the Lakers until they're good. Oh, you guys are so noble, you Los Angeles. You disgusting pile of shit of a city where you literally get rid of all your homeless, even though all the people that went there could have donated to the fucking homeless. Uh, Oh, but thank God. uh, A fucking studio apartment is $4,000 a week. Oh, the honor of living in a city with traffic. Oh, the honor of living in a city with transplant fake sport fans and women and men that have plastic surgery. Oh, the honor of living in Los Angeles. 
and they have sealed the deal. After that history-making moment, the safety got down on one knee, presenting girlfriend Danny Johnson with an engagement ring. And you know the what crowd this is? couldn't get enough. Uh, so he has got CTE. He hits his head for a living. But in the bedroom and behind closed doors at his mansion, this boy is whipped. This boy is whipped. This boy is whipped. All right, enough. What I'm saying is this. Is if you literally propose right after the Super Bowl, you're just doing it for Instagram, bro. Check out all the onlookers cheering on Danny's yes. You go, boy. You ruin your life and lose half your things when she cheats on you with a fitness trainer. Oh, I'm sure the marriage is going to go on forever and ever. Amen. Rings. <laughs> Get that caption. Two rings. Get it? <laughs> He's getting married and he won the Super Bowl. That's a good one. Sunday with not one, but two rings. All right. This whole video is them going, yeah, we're just happy to be at the Super Bowl. We have no idea what position you play because there's no true fans in Los Angeles. But yeah, let's cheer for the dude who's on Instagram because we want to get famous. I mean, seriously, you look at the fan base of Los Angeles and it was just like all the rich people there. And it's just like they don't even know what football is. I don't. I just, I just can't. I don't know, man. Like, I'm over the NFL, but I'm not. You know what I mean? Like, everybody goes, oh, I'm over the NFL. But it's, we need to have a talk about the NFL, man. We need to have a discussion about the NFL, man. We need to have an open dialogue. I think that was the good grammar. About the NFL. And its flaws. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. There are a lot of flaws when it comes to the NFL, the National Football League. It goes with Roger Goodell, that fucking asshole. All right, enough of that. All right, here's the thing. We need to have a talk. So during that Super Bowl, they let that pass interference call go in the first quarter. Chris Collinsworth, who everybody hates for some reason, but I think he's delightful. Probably because I see a lot of me and him where he's hated, but I'm doing my thing. Here's the thing. Chris Collinsworth goes, oh, this game. The roughs are just letting them play. And I went, oh, no. Whenever an announcer points out that all the calls are being thrown away, yeah, you go, when is this going to change, man? When that happens, you go, when is this going to change, man? And oh boy, it did in the last two minutes. I've never been a conspiracy theorist. I think radio hosts that go into conspiracy theories are losers. I think it's low brow because it's literally like writing a fictional book. You can say whatever the hell you want, even though that's all talk radio. Here's the thing. You can't possibly look at the NFL and go, oh, it's totally not a little rigged. It just feels like whenever there's a chance for the team that makes the NFL more money to have calls go their way, like the Los Angeles Rams against the New Orleans Saints a few years ago and the Rams getting all the calls at the end of the game, it kind of makes you wonder if they wanted the home team to win, to win in Los Angeles. I so badly wanted the Cincinnati Bengals to go in and win that fucking game. Oh, I wanted Joe Burrow, who was hanging out with Kid Cudi after the game. And I just thought, and I thought that was cool. Just listen to some depressing rap music. That's what I do. Everyone's like, oh my God, Joe Burrow was at a concert. Yeah, he just got sacked 12 times. Heaven forbid he listened to some Kid Cudi to relax. Here's the thing. You can't possibly look at the NFL and go, it's not rigged. The last two minutes, Los Angeles gets all the calls. But then that that touchdown bomb, when the uh, roughing the when the face mask was pulled, when Cincinnati got that touchdown and the refs didn't call that, it's like, what are you doing? 
It makes me now want to watch the NFL. Like, I am legitimately glad. I am legitimately excited. I am legitimately thrilled that I'm not going to have to watch football for the next seven months. In the past, I've been a very sad man. In the past, I've been very upset. I go, no, I need more of the NFL. No, I go, I can't, man. Like, I watched that whole game on a work night, man. I could have been sleeping. I could have been taking care of myself, but I had to watch it for the job. And it's just like, you look at the grand scheme of things, and you realize it's a little fake. Oh. (laughs) And then everybody's hating on the Super Bowl halftime show. (laughs) Showing their racism. That was a perfect half. That was the most perfect halftime show ever. Everybody got about 20% of the time so one person does three minutes. It was perfectly timed out. The set was nice. Oh, but it's rap music. Even though the people that were saying, oh, it's rap music, is the baby boomer and Gen X generation that had orgies listening to rock music in the 70s and 80s. But they act so clean cut because there was no cell phone proof back then. So that same generation is saying that the rap up there is disgusting and it's despicable, even though they're a fan of Kiss and they were talking about 16-year-old girls. But the rappers, no, I can't have that. That same generation that's into that garbage music that's ripping into the halftime show, your parents hated that music and then their parents hated the Big Bopper. So you're coming off like a boomer. You're kind of coming off like you're out of touch when you do that. Oh, no. Let's not have a hip-hop show. Let's just have another rock band. Just do their... I almost said Rock City for some season. For some reason. Jesus. Uh, Let's have just some old-ass rock band. Just come on out and do the same thing. Dave Matthews Band, please. Please bring out Bruce Springsteen. We need him again. Oh, God. I hate the halftime show. And the halftime show hates you, and so does your wife. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah, this following segment, man. (laughs) What a segment that was. In the grand scheme of things, in my mind, in the grand scheme of things, in my own brain, people are going to listen back to that break and go, man, that's what podcasting was all about there, Ryan Hoppy. You go, Ryan. You're so good at that. Keep grinding. 70 downloads. 70 downloads. Shut up! This following segment was brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com. When I tell you that they are the best printing company in all the Bay Area, I'm a man of my word. So I would not lie to you. I would not steer you in the wrong direction. Posters, business cards, yard signs, whatever the hell you need printed up, man. Whatever you need, they will hook you up. Here's the thing. You're going to get the invoice, and the invoice is going to be phenomenal. The invoice is going to be amazing. They're going to give you a great deal because that's what they do at West Chase Printing with DJ Tone Tampa. That's just the type of guy he is. That's the type of business that he is. He's going to hook you up. But do you notice this trend amongst the people that sponsor this show? When you name drop me, you're going to get an even better deal. Happy hour. Happy hour. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, this little Bizarre. guy. Bizarre. Buddy, if I had a peanut, I'd give Bizarre. it to you. Bizarre. I love you. Bizarre. I love you. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Happy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen. Here it is, the most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Eight five six. No, that dramatic pause was not because it was on purpose. It was on accident. 856-49-HOPPY. Just trying to load up this video. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and I will be sure to see your tweets in real time. And you can always email me, Radio at gmail.com. For all the info, RyanHoppyRadio.com. What is it time for? Whoa, happy 
Hot Topic. Oh, yeah. The 2022 Super Bowl champs have been crowned. <gasps> the Los Angeles Rams pulled off an epic victory, beating the Cincinnati Bengals 23-20 in a nail-biting game at SoFi Stadium. On it wasn't really nail-biting. It was just good defense. It wasn't really the Super Bowl I wanted. Sunday. Yeah. And the team's quarterback, Matthew Stafford's family, couldn't be prouder. Oh, thank God. After snagging the team... What are they going to say? Oh, Dad, you didn't do that good of a performance. You had that Detroit Lion type of interception in the first half, which he always does. What are the fi- What's the family going to say? Oh, you did an okay job. You barely won each game in the, in the playoffs, but you did enough to win, so you can't really hate on him. Of course his family is going to applaud him. And be prouder. After snagging the team's first Super Bowl win since 1999, the University of Georgia grad's wife, Kelly, rushed to the field and gave her man a congratulatory kiss. I don't like that they said the first win since 1999. Like, that was in St. Louis, bro. And she had their youngest, one-year-old daughter, Tyler, on her hip. Yeah. Their four-year-old twins, Chandler and Sawyer, quickly followed, giving their dad a sweet hug. (gasps) And their three-year-old daughter, Hunter, was also snapped, celebrating her dad's big win. Oh, that's good. Not only did this year's Super Bowl deliver a thrilling football game, yeah. but the halftime performance was also fire. Hell yeah, bro. You sound so Caucasian. I mean, did you really just say this? This year's Super Bowl deliver a thrilling football game, but the halftime performance was also fire. Yeah, bro. Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, mm. Eminem, and Kendrick Lamar <gasps> delivered an over-the-top performance at So. Was it over the top? I mean, it was pretty average. What was over the top about it? 50 Cent having women conservatively twerk around him? Like they did what they could on TV? Over the top performance. What was the top performance? What was over the top? I don't know. Oh, here's Mary J. Blige. Here's Dr. Dre. Here's Snoop Dogg. Here's Kendrick Lamar trying to be like really edgy. And here's Eminem. Pepsi halftime show, really out of control, really edgy. Oh, wow, they really broke. I mean, it was good. I loved it, but I don't think it's over the top. It was standard for TV. At SoFi Stadium, that was full of nostalgia, good vibes, yeah. and a couple of surprises. Man, I wasn't at the game. I couldn't really afford to go there, but, man, I could just smell it from here. Smoke weed every day. Oh, it just reeked like it. Smoke weed every day. Hell yeah. And where were all the masks? Fucking Los Angeles. Yeah, you know, you need to wear a mask at all times. Blah, blah, blah. Even though Gavin Newsom, the uh, governor, is never wearing a mask, you must do. You must comply. Why the hell was nobody wearing a mask at the game? <laughs> Smoke weed every day. Uh, oh, but I must live in Los Angeles. Dr. Dre and Snoop kick things off by belting out their classic hit, the next episode. Yeah. And with some help from dancers, the two music icons paid tribute to the late rapper Tupac. Ah, uh, whatever. Uh, well, that was the wrong time to say, ah, uh, whatever. But here's the thing. Why the hell was Dr. Dre rapping Tupac? Like, let it go, man. <laughs> let it go. I know you're in California, so you're trying to appeal to California. And I'm not saying that Dr. Dre is not an elite rapper, because he's great. I wouldn't want him dating my daughter, but he's great. Here's the thing, though. He's not Tupac. He's great. Don't get me wrong. He's awesome. I want him to be my doctor. I need a doctor. That's a reference to Eminem song. Here's the thing. But he's not Tupac. So why the hell do you have Dr. Dre out there performing Tupac's music? I mean, seriously. If that's my biggest problem in life is not being happy with the Dr. Dre performance at the Super Bowl, then I am winning. But you know who's not winning in life? You know who's not somebody that seems like you want to be around is that imbecile known as Joy Behar. Megan McCain calls out her old View co-host, Joy Behar, and compares her to a drunk ex. Ah, pretty accurate. She seems like she would drink really gross wine. We have to move on. It all unfolded on Twitter yeah. after Megan shared this Valentine's Day snapshot with her husband. Oh, they were in cowboy hats and in the middle of a cornfield. Yeah, America. Captioning it, quote, Happy Valentine's Day, Ben. Yeah. I love you, and I'm grateful every day for the life we have oh, together. 
that's when a Twitter user commented under Megan's post, writing, quote, does every thought and sentiment need to be on Twitter? Oh, shut up, Bernadette. Pick a lemonade, you dumb bitch, whatever the hell your name is. And then enters George. Uh, anonymous troll account. Anonymous troll account. Oh, they're the worst. Enters Joy, who responded to that comment, writing, quote, apparently. Oh, shut up. Twitter for iPad is what she is. So she's on her iPad. <laughs> I'm reading the news that's got the liberal leaning because I'm a liberal asshole. People like it that we argue. They oh, do they? Oh, they, they, they love it. Like that. Well, they like conflict. Megan clapped back at Joy's statement, writing, quote, Oh, hey there, Joy. I see you're spending your afternoon creeping on my Valentine's Day <laughs> with your weirdo friend who sued ABC. I don't always agree with everything that Meghan McCain says. I'm not always like, oh, my God, was that a smart opinion? Now it's actually kind of ignorant and out of touch. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, she's got that beady. She's got that badass energy. And she's good looking. Oh, man. She's not that conservative. Here's what I'm saying. It's the fact that I just love that she throws shots out there. I just love it. And that's why they wanted her off the show was because she would win any argument. She was a better debater because she came from politics. She's not a hack comedian like Joy Behar. So here's the thing. That's why they got rid of her. Joy's drunk on the afternoon. Apparently. Shut up. In a now deleted tweet, Megan added, quote, Why would you delete it? You're supposed to be the badass Megan McCain. Leaving the view is like having exes who won't stop drunk texting you. And then you're also doing the same thing. So that's where you kind of lose me. We're not being phony and I'm not trying to placate to an audience. Yeah. The 37 year old also wrote, quote, Imagine spending your Valentine's Day trolling your ex colleague. But you're talking about it. That's what I don't get about people that talk about haters. When these celebrities go, oh, I don't care about the haters. You do because you're texting and you're tweeting and you're posting about the haters. You know what I do when I get a hater? I block them. You know what I do? I have my Instagram on private, right? And Hoppy Radio, but Hoppy Hour Radio and Hoppy in the Morning is public. And I got my Facebook completely private, bitch. I want a private life. I truly don't care about the haters because they don't say it to your face. But I hate when Selena Gomez and I hate when Demi Lovato and I hate when Megan McCain are like, I don't care about my exes at The View. I don't care about the haters, even though I'm tweeting about it. Well, they were tweeting about it, so I'm doing the same thing they were doing. Get the hell out of here. What are you talking about? Ending your Valentine's Day trolling your ex-colleague's tweet about her husband. And like then you're tweeting about that person. Megan capped off her latest Twitter feud with Joy by doubling down, writing, quote, It's pathetic and it creeps me out. I'm still not used to it. It's been six months since Megan signed off from The View. And it's been the best six months ever. I don't know. I don't care. I, I don't watch. But whenever I think about The View, I think of this. Hey, Stewie, three o'clock. Time for The View. Yeah. No, 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 not again! <laughs> Yeah, let me out of here! I can't watch another second! Oh, happy hot topic! Pete Davidson is here to support Kim Kardashian. Hell yeah! And now, a source is opening up to E.T. about how the SNL star is helping his girlfriend through her divorce from Kanye. Oh, jeez, I just had like a stroke or whatever. Any other radio show would have cut that out. Oh, we got to have the perfect seven second break into a song that you can get on Spotify. On this show, we're never perfect a day in our lives. Here's what I was trying to say. Pete Davidson, he's a good dude, man. He's a likable cat. All the people out there, how does he get tricks? It doesn't matter. He's getting them. All the dudes out there, the hate on him. You're spanking at the porn hub. He is getting laid. Same with Kanye, manically doing all these things. While he's manically doing all these things, Kim's going down on him and he's doing the same thing. Like, get over it. Kanye West. What's my life going to look like? Well, we know Kim's life looks a bit different since yeah. last February when she filed for divorce from the rapper. 
In October, she started dating Pete after making her SNL hosting debut. Now, are you going to kiss me or not? Oh, jeez. I sure am, Jasmine. That skit, I knew they were banging. That kiss they made when you had Cam Kardashian as Prince Jasmine and you had Pete Davidson as Aladdin. I was like, oh, they've given each other mouth hugs. Yeah. Mouth hugs, Billy. And Kanye, well, he's made his feelings clear. You know, how you gonna bring me to SNL and kiss the dude you dating right in front of Front of me. And how are you going to cheat on her and then alienate your whole, your whole family and then talk about how you almost got an abortion when you ran for president, Kanye West? When I do something wrong, it's because I'm being creative. When I do something wrong, it's because I'm being unique. But if Joe from Largo were to do that, he'd be an obsessive ex. But when Kanye does it, he, he's just being Kanye, man. He doesn't mean it, as my girlfriend says about people. They don't know no better. Kanye knows completely better. Then he goes on all these podcasts, full send podcasts. I'm not hating on the numbers they get, but they just go, hey, Antonio Brown, hey, Kanye West, any of these sociopathic actors, these sociopathic rappers, these sociopathic athletes, let's interview you and we'll just ask you softball questions and then you'll answer them and then we'll go viral. It's no credibility. A lot of views, a lot of fans, but no credibility. And everybody's like, oh, that's that's cool. Yeah. There's also this controversial lyric on Kanye's latest single, Easy. I can't play that. Because of, uh, you know, copyright laws, they're not really fun over there. 856-49 Hoppy Man. Let me tell you, though. There is nobody besides Alec Baldwin. That's probably that's probably the guy, the man who I hate more than anything. It used to be that Kim Kardashian was the woman, was the lady who I hated more than anything. But over the years, I've really began to really like her. She's really got in my approval. Oh, and I know she needed that so badly. Here's the thing, though. So Alec Baldwin is the man that I hate more than anything, but you know who that identifies as a female that I hate more than anything? No, it's not my ex. We'll find out after this. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour. We'll be right back. Oh, this following segment was brought to you by Rich Keeley, Master Barbershop at Salon Loft on Kennedy Boulevard, right next door to McDonald's. When I tell you that he is the best barber in all of the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. I would not steer you in the wrong direction. RichKBarber.com. Sign up for an appointment. And when you go there and you sit down in that seat after you schedule online, tell him I sent you. Happy hour. Happy hour. Someone hook me up with a flame. I'm having a look for. Er, uh, light him up. Midwad. Here. Encourage him in his habit. That's a good smoker. When did you start smoking? This morning. I rose my rooster. I'm going to tear up. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. That the other stations are tuned in too. This is who I hate. Wendy Williams, that dirty, rotten hack. Oh, what a bitch she is. And no, I'm not being sexist because Alec Baldwin's a bitch and a dick. Oh, they're the worst. Wendy Williams acts like your friend and then goes on TV and spills the tea. But karma really hit her. It's not because she got sick. It's because when they have all the replacements on, it gets better ratings. I mean, how much do you have to suck? How much do you have to be irrelevant? And no, I'm not talking about myself. When you literally are gone and the ratings are better. How you doing, Wendy? I don't think you're doing too good. I hope your health gets better because I never wish that upon anybody. But let me tell you, the ratings-wise, they're better enough. 
they are just happy going. She's gone. No! Happy Hot Topic! The Wicked Witch of Brooklyn. She's gone. I got some good news. She sure does. Sherry Shepard isn't leaving her role as guest co-host of the Wendy Williams show anytime soon. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We're free. <laughs> Even though I've never watched an episode of my life. Fabulous. As Wendy Williams continues to take time to focus on her health, yeah. the source tells E.T. Sherry is taking over the show for now. Woo-hoo! Okay, let's do this. How you do it? <laughs> And she did it better. <laughs> oh, man. She's really taking on the role of taking over Wendy. I mean, listen, listen. I feel like anybody else that would respect Wendy, like you don't take the thing she says, but she's even impersonating her. She's really trying to take her job. Her health. A source tells E.T. Sherry is taking over the show for now. Listen to this. Okay, let's do this. How you do it? <laughs> And you know, Wendy's at home coughing, doing some cocaine, going, that bitch! But don't worry, the titular host is expected to come back. The source adds, Oh, thank God, I was so worried! But remains optimistic that Wendy will return in the fall. Ah, uh, that's a long time. Uh, so no. And we've got a lot to talk about. Oh, we do? This news. Oh, we must hear from you ripping into everybody else's life when you're never genuine about your own life because your life is more messed up than anybody else's you talk about. This comes just weeks after the talk show announced Wendy's hiatus will continue. <sighs> it's been nearly five months since the TV personality began her medical leave of absence. And we haven't missed her. One second. Wendy, I know you're watching right now. Um, what up, Michael Cho? On behalf of myself, the panel, your co-host, we love you and can't- Oh, we, we have the same emotion we have for our mother and father. We love you. Oh, so genuine. Can't wait to have you back in that place. Oh, whatever. And despite being away, Wendy seems to be in good spirits. Oh, uh, no, she's not. 856-49 Hoppy. Prince Harry is embracing American tradition yeah. by going to the Super Bowl. Oh, man. Think about the average Joe who will never be able to go to a Super Bowl, but some pretentious asshole from Britain gets to. Woohoo! The Duke of Sussex was spotted celebrating the big game yeah. with several other celebrities over the weekend. Got it. Cedric the Entertainer posted a shot of himself shaking hands with Harry on Instagram on Monday. The inter- I don't know. Like, I used to be really into celebrities, but now I'm like, whatever. Reaction comes after Cedric joked about the Duke and Duchess while hosting the Emmys in September. Oh, yeah. He really it was so funny. Oh, Cedric the Entertainer 2003 called. <laughs> And you might go, Ryan, if you hate celebrities, why do you talk about them? Because it's fun. It's not politics. It's not crypto, bro. I'm just saying. Dream music star Mickey Guyton also shared that she ran into the former royal, posing for a pic with a 37-year-old and writing, I met Prince Harry. He was just lovely. Oh, of course he's going to be lovely. What's he going to be, an asshole? I even curtsied in my tracksuit. Ah, whatever. A56-49, Hoppy. This next headline makes me embarrassed. To be a man. This next headline makes me embarrassed to be the same gender as him. The mother of Tristan Thompson's child is making some pretty serious claims, saying that Tristan has done nothing to financially support their son since news of his paternity scandal broke last year. Let's get into it. Tristan Thompson makes every man look bad. Tristan Thompson makes every NBA player look bad. Here's the thing. There is nothing worse than a deadbeat father. I'm not saying that the pull-out method is 100% foolproof. But like, you get your girl on the pill or you pull out correctly. Like, when you pull out, you can't wait till the last minute. You got to be like pretty much revved up. But you have to do the rest of the engine. You can't rely on the other thing to make the engine go. Does that make sense? Dudes that knock up girls... Go, oh, it feels so good. Yeah, it's the greatest feeling ever. And it comes with responsibility. Don't get me wrong. That feeling uh, is amazing. It's great. It's wonderful. But you also can knock up women and then be a deadbeat father. That's why I never feel bad for anybody who, if it's not pre-semen, that's on accident. You're trying not to. But when it's your full on completing the task and then you get a girl pregnant, I have no sympathy for you. None at all. And then people that become parents, oh, I know everything because a man put his semen into my vagina. Cool. You did the most basic human thing ever. Mating. Wow. You're so smart. 
But back to Thompson, he's the worst. I hate it's that. It's been a couple months. Oh, geez. I wasn't done talking. I hate deadbeat dads. I, it just makes me so mad. You don't realize how much you're affecting your kids. God. And then people that deserve to have kids can't have them. It's literally the movie, Idiocracy. Let's get into it. It's been a couple months since it was revealed to the public that Tristan Thompson had cheated on on-again, off-again girlfriend Khloe Kardashian with fitness model Marilee Nichols. I mean, listen, do I feel bad for her? Yes, but you knew who you were banging. It wasn't like he was a great guy. Which led to a pretty nasty battle in court yeah. after Marilee sued Tristan for paternity when she discovered she was pregnant. I don't know what this means, but she just has side chick energy. I kind of know what that means. That's why I said it. In case I'm just saying. In case you missed it, Tristan adamantly denied fathering the baby, though later on in the legal battle, a paternity mm. test revealed that Tristan was, in fact, the father of Marilee's son, born, born in December 2021. Soon after, Tristan took to his IG stories to write, Today, paternity tests reveal that I fathered a child with Marilee Nichols. Mm. I take full responsibility for my actions. Now that paternity has been established, I look forward to amicably raising our son. Oh, what a lovely guy. Amicably. I can't even say the word. Yeah, you're hiding behind your lawyer, you deadbeat father pussy. Before writing an apology directly to Chloe. Oh, and even though sometimes- Chloe, you don't deserve this. You don't deserve the heartache and the humiliation I have caused you. You don't deserve the way I have treated you over the years. My actions certainly have not lined up with the way I view you. What, that she's, a, that she's essentially just a vagina? How do you view Chloe? How do you view yourself? I don't think very well. 856-49-HOPPY. 856-494-6773. ET has learned Kanye West is newly single, but he kept plenty busy on social media this Valentine's Day, including some controversial posts about ex Kim Kardashian and her romance with Pete Davidson. ET reached out to Kim's rep for comment. Yeah. Just do something from my heart. On Monday, the rapper kicked things off sharing these photos. The images seemingly show a truckload of flowers Kanye delivered to Kim's house. He wrote, Oh, nothing sexier than a truckload of the flowers. Because guys that drive trucks have such big dicks and great personality. I love trucks. My vision is crystal clear. Yeah. Later, Kanye shared these screenshots of text messages. The conversation is It's called Kim Other Phone. <laughs> it should be Kim. It should be Kim busy banging an other dude. Allegedly between himself and Kim. Mm. And they concern his repeated comments about Pete. You just gotta roll with it. Yeah. The first message reads. You are creating a dangerous and scary environment and someone will hurt Pete and this will be all your fault. Oh, wow. He's a good guy. Kanye wrote... He's so talented and creative. Oh, he's such a good guy. All the Yeezy fans, you're all cycle fans or however you say the word. It will be all your fault. Kanye wrote alongside the snapshot, quote, Upon my wife's request, please nobody do anything physical to ski. I'm going to handle the situation myself. What a scary dude. Like, listen, if this was any other dude, you guys would be crucifying him. Oh, but it's Kanye, someone I've never met. Bunch of kiss asses. You're all a bunch of sheep buying his shoes, thinking he believes in God, even though he's trying to essentially murder somebody. Oh, what a religious good guy. But then again, religion is pretty creepy. In another post, Kim further explained her concerns, allegedly writing, yeah. there are dangerous people out there and this is scary and it doesn't have to be. Seemingly in response to Kanye sharing screenshots of their messages, Kim later allegedly asked, why can't you keep any of our conversations private? Kanye reacted, he's a sociopath. By, well, sharing an image of Kim's alleged complaint about her privacy. He also replied to the question writing, because I got a text from my favorite person in the world. I'm your number one fan. Why oh, that's creepy. Why wouldn't I tell everyone? That's weird. Um, privacy? I call him my boyfriend and oh, he calls you. me his girlfriend. Cute. And I, I have such a great personality. I'm Julia Fox. Earlier on Monday, E.T. learned Kanye and Julia Fox are going their separate ways after dating a little over a month. Oh, what a long relationship that was. I'm surprised it went a month. I call him my boyfriend and oh, he calls you. me his girlfriend. Cute. Julia Fox called Kanye West her boyfriend just last week. 
And then she got sick of him because she found some other dude she can ride and take his money. Oh, she's got such a big income from all the roles she's been in. Oh, she's killing it in life. <laughs> the hell out of here. Just last week, but now a source tells E.T. the two are no longer together. Mm. He kind of like connect the dots. The uncut gem star and the rapper are going their separate ways after dating a little over a month. Like, listen, being in a movie's pretty cool or whatever. Not really. Who cares? But when you keep referring to a movie from three years ago as the reason you were a star, even though you weren't that big of a character. Yeah, your career is garbage and you're dating dudes and women and whatever you're into for attention and clout because deep down you know you're not that talented julia seemingly addressed the split in a now deleted post to her instagram story, yeah reportedly telling her followers she and kanye are on good terms adding oh i'm, I'm sure you're on wonderful terms you didn't hire more security guards or anything she still has love for kanye but she wasn't in love with him what does that even that's what my ex told me when she dumped me at target i love the idea of you i'm like as my girlfriend says, she doesn't even like the idea of me. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh yeah. This following segment. I just hadn't I just had enough of hearing about Kanye and Julia Fox. Get the hell out of here. Who cares? She'll go date Drake next week. Hang out at a high school. Cool. This following segment was brought to you by ZRadioLive.com, ZRadio Live on Odyssey, and on TuneIn. When I tell you that that is the best internet top 40 station, hell, I would put it up against anything in any other city that sounds the same. You know what the program directors are doing? They copy and paste the music logs from other cities. But no, no, no. ZRadio Live picks out their playlist. ZRadio Live perfectly sets up. It's a top 40 internet radio station. But here's the best part. Every Thursday, including if you're listening right now so you're already aware, every Thursday at 5 p.m. East Coast time, 4 p.m. Central, Happy Hour is live on ZRadioLive.com. Thanks to my good friend, Zach Feldman, the PD over at ZRadioLive.com. For all the info, like I just said, ZRadioLive.com. Happy Hour. Happy hour. Well, it was good while it lasted, I guess. But, Sheriff, the glory hole is the pride and joy of Dougal County. Fella found an even older glory hole two towns over. Lord knows I ain't looking forward to telling the tourism board about this. Such an elegant concept. A simple, lowly hole to commemorate his glory. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, happy Hot Topic! Whoopi Goldberg is back. She was suspended from The View for two weeks mm. after <gasps> sensitive comments about the Holocaust. Mm. But it won't stop her from weighing in on tough issues. Oh, thank God. I want to thank everybody who yeah. reached out while I was away. Oh, I'm sure everybody was reaching out with the economy and gas prices going up and everything going up. Oh, we really care about Whoopi Goldberg being bombastic. And I'm telling you, people reached out from places that made me go, wait, wait, what? Really? <laughs> yeah. Wait, 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 wait. These people want clout? And I, I listened to everything everybody had to say, and yeah. I was very grateful, and I hope it keeps all the important conversations. Oh, uh, what, are you being a loudmouth hack? 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. We are on Spotify, TuneIn, Spreaker, Mixcloud, Stitcher. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, I think I said that, Amazon Music, Audible, Mixcloud, Deezer, Geosavon. We are on every single platform. And if you use a different link, if you use a different app, ryanhoppyradio.com has the RSS feed. So you can always listen by searching up Hoppy Radio on every single major platform. It's pretty clear that Kanye West is not a fan of Pete Davidson or, in his words, ski. 
Yeah. Ever since Kim Kardashian and Pete started dating, mm. Kanye has been dissing him left and right. First, it was a line in a song, and now it's an Instagram post. Yeah. Those uh, posts, he wasn't even screenshotting correctly. I'm like, you're so psychotic. Your social media looks like garbage. Actually, scratch that. Make that several. Kind of like Donda. Every song sucked besides off the grid. Off the grid, good grid. Off the grid, good grid. Off the grid, good grid. Listen to the song, song, song. Catch that. Make that several Instagram posts. Early Saturday, Ye posted a note that read, Just so everyone knows, Cuddy will not be on Donda because he's friends with you know who. We all speak in Billy language now. That's the sad part. Is like Kid Cuddy, Big Sean, all these rappers that he worked with that now he's turning on. They're just as talented as him. Maybe they're, I mean, the lyrics for Kid Cudi are as deep as Kanye, but maybe some of these rappers, like Big Sean, I don't fuck with you. Yeah, not the deepest lyrics, but they're talented. They're great. And then you turn on them. No one turns on Kid Cudi. That would be my dream interview. I want to get higher. Yeah, that's one of his songs. Here's the thing. I love relating to people that are depressed because I always am. At the time, both Billy and Kid Cudi responded to Ye's now-deleted post. Why would you respond? He's a loser. With he hasn't been good in 15 years. Billy commenting, literally never said a thing about Travis, was just helping a fan. Oh, okay. I don't really believe that. While Cudi wrote back, too bad. I don't want to be on your album, you f***ing dinosaur. <laughs> Everyone knows I've been the best thing about your album since I met you. I'm going to pray for you, brother. Kid Even though he's atheist. So he's not really praying for him. Cuddy also tweeted in response to Ye's note, quote, we talked weeks ago about this. You're whack for flipping the script and posting this lie just for a look on the internet. You ain't no friend. Bye. Yeah. Kanye West, I don't think he's going to do this, but he sincerely might wake up someday and realize that he burned every bridge. That's the problem with being manic. That's the problem with bipolar is that you burn bridges. Then later that day, Ye shared a now deleted picture of himself with Pete, Timothy Chalamet, and Kid Cudi at Cudi's birthday party back in 2019. And the picture in question had a giant red X over Pete's face. Creepy guy, man. Kanye captioned this. And the red X is like using that spray paint font, you know, when you like design like a picture or whatever. Like it looked, it looked like a Kid Picks production. Picture quote, I just wanted my friend to have my back. The knife just goes in deeper. He's like one of those guys, like a radio guy that doesn't know how to run the board but can talk. That's essentially Kanye. It doesn't seem like he's good at anything but rapping. But things didn't end there. On Sunday, Ye shared an old paparazzi picture of Kim and Pete walking and holding hands with their faces cropped out of it. He captioned it, quote, look at this dickhead i wonder if instagram gonna shut down my page for dissing hillary clinton's ex-boyfriend oh wow he got a tattoo when he was drunk such a hillary fan shut up dude kanye how are you how are you doing today oh what up baby how you been he's wearing like a mask you can't see him good you went to babies today enjoy and the kids are like jesus where's mom that's Kanye West stepping out with his eldest kids, North and Saint, at Super Bowl 56, yeah. amid some serious divorce drama with his estranged wife, Kim Kardashian. We got good seats, Dorothy. Saint, is this good seats? Dude, it's sad. He's asking them, do you have good seats? Are these good seats? And they legitimately look scared of him. The award-winning rapper donned an all-black look, while eight-year-old North and six-year-old Saint sported football jerseys for the big game between the Los Angeles Rams and Cincinnati Bengals. Like, they look scared of him, bro. And that glove right there, that was given to Ye by LA Rams player Odell Beckham Jr., who tossed him a pair before taking the field. Oh, that's good. Maybe that's why he tore his ACL, hanging around bad energy. I'm just kidding, it's because he did a dumb play. Oh, there you see the kid smiling. Kanye's a Your father ran for president and said that they were going to abort you. He's a really good guy, and he's hanging out with Antonio Brown. Man, he's surrounding himself with success. Appearance comes just hours after he spent Sunday morning firing off a series of Instagram posts, many aimed at Kim's current beau, Pete Davidson. Mm. Alongside a photo of the Skims founder and the SNL star, Ye writes in part, I don't have beef with Kim. I love my family, so stop that narrative. I'm not giving up on my family. Yeah, work on your family, not on a relationship with Kim that does not exist. <laughs> Santa! <laughs> 
Britney Spears never stops laughing with Sam Asghari uh, so on funny. Valentine's Day. I'm sure he's not with her for clout. He looks like such a good guy. <laughs> Matches Singer posted a glimpse at a silly moment between her and her fiance. The lovebirds were biking at sunset and joking about the other vehicles on the road. Oh, There's that's a good. truck way up there. <laughs> There's cars on the road. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, that's what I do on my free time. I walk down US 19. I go, please run me over. Not at all. Brian Laundry's full autopsy report has been released. I'm convinced that the North Port, the North Port police helped him escape and got rid of all the evidence. Because the FBI tried hard, but those scumbag leads to cops of course they defended him revealing new information about their north poor cops about his physical state at the time of his death as well as what was recovered with his body all right eight five six forty nine hoppy i'm getting a panic attack so we'll take a quick break i'm just kidding the show's over bye happy hour happy hour the hour will be right back. Actually, I'm not going to end my show. So let me explain to you what happened. I take meds from ADHD, bipolar. And uh, a few weeks ago, I ran out of my meds and my shrink retired. And the place that I was going to didn't reschedule a new appointment for me. So I had to go to my old shrink and get an emergency prescription. And now I'm going to this new place. So they called me to make sure I can go tomorrow. So that's why I was like saying I'm having a panic attack, but I'm actually not going to end the show yet. We'll end it in a few minutes. I have a few more things to talk about. But this following side, that's just me being real. I could go back and edit it, but no, 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 no. We're genuine on this show. Life's too short to not be genuine. But let me tell you, this following segment has been brought to you by FitzageFitness.com, WestChasePrinting.com, RichKBarber.com, and much, much more. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773 and Amir Academy of Martial Arts. I was drawing a blank there. They're all the best, man. I surround myself with success. Happy hour. Happy hour. Whoa, hey. <laughs> Oh, hey, hey, it's, uh, I mean, it's like a koala bear crapped a rainbow in my brain. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. All right, let's get this over with. Although I know you're loving it. Hot topic. Today, an original leak getting away with everything. Prince Andrew has settled a lawsuit brought by Virginia Jufree. Oh, thank God. The royalty, we must bow down to them. If anybody else did that, they would have to go to court, but because it's a royalty member, oh, we must bow down to them. Fuck you. A woman who alleges he sexually abused her when she was a minor, according to new court filing obtained by NBC News. And shout out to these women for coming forward. You know how scary that is to come forward? They are superheroes. The sum of money that the 61-year-old has agreed to pay his accuser was not disclosed. Oh, because when you're an innocent man, you pay money. Like, remember Bill O'Reilly 18 years ago had those tapes where he was sexually harassing women and then he paid a million dollars? And he's like, but I'm innocent. If you're paying people, you're not innocent. But the filing noted that the prince will make, quote, a substantial donation to Miss Jufri's charity in support of victims' rights. Oh, that's good. Take a guy's money. Like, I'm not saying you shouldn't take it, but that's dirty money. In a letter to New York federal judge Lewis Kaplan, which was attached to the settlement filing, Drew Free's lawyer, David Boyes, wrote in part, Yeah. Quote, Prince Andrew has never intended to malign Miss Drew Free's character. Oh, thank God. And he accepts that she has suffered both as an established victim of abuse and as a result of unfair public attacks. Oh, but we must protect him because he's royalty. Listen, listen. I also was going to talk about Kodak Black getting shot outside a Bieber after party, but who cares? Here's the thing. A lot of people go, oh, I want to have all the money in the world, and I want the money too. But man, you look at some of these rich elite assholes, Kanye West, Alec Baldwin, Prince Andrew, and then everybody that ever hung out with Jeffrey Epstein, and even though they are rich and famous, 
And even though they get away with everything, someday their body's going to be laying in the ground and cockroaches will be going at it. Or someday they will be nothing more than dust. And that makes me happy. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. And like that, he's gone.